Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the best five ways to do blurring inside of GIMP. So a bunch of different tools that you can use in order to get the results that you are looking for in various situations. So the first way that we're going to blur is actually going to be using literally the blur tool that you can find in the tools window over on the left by default. So the blur tool is good when you want to make part of your image a little bit blurry, but not so blurry that it's impossible to tell what was originally there. So with the blur tool and you're working on an image this big, make sure that you increase your brush size so that you can actually get it done in a reasonable amount of time. And also note that I have my rate currently set to 100. If you want the blur to apply faster, then you should have the rate increased to a higher number. It defaults to around 50, which is like this. You can see that it takes a little while for the blur to actually apply and it doesn't exactly distort the image in the background all that much. You can still pretty much tell who it was. So if you want it to go faster, you can increase the rate there, but that'll also give you a little less fine tooth control over what you're trying to do there. Now uh, you can tell this isn't exactly the best tool if you want to hide someone's face. So when you are going to be using the blur tool, it's usually gonna be more for something like when you want to defocus something in the background. So for instance, if I thought that these mountains in the background of this shot are a bit too visible and I want to make the image focus more on what's going on in the foreground the guy here with his cross sitting on the mountain um, then I can left click and kind of blur out these parts of the images making the mountains a little less stand out and therefore your eyes wouldn't be drawn to them as much so using the blur tool it becomes easy to target part of your image with the blurring uh, without really affecting everything all at once so the second tool is the smudge tool, which you can use to defocus an image just like with the blur tool, but the difference is that smudge will also move around pixels. So if you want the basic shape of whatever was originally there to be visible, then the smudge tool might not be the best one. It'll definitely make it hard to tell exactly who was there, but you can see how it also distorts it heavily that it might not even look like a normal human face anymore if you do it too much. So a better use for the smudge tool would be if you are trying to hide some text on a document, for instance. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And we have this amount of money, $32 million. This is a fake scam email, by the way. So if I want to blur out this ridiculous sum of money, then I can left click at the start of where I want the smudge to be, hold shift down to create a straight line, hold control down to make it snap. So if I snap it down here, it'll be a perfectly straight line with no angle. And then I can left click. And then just like that, everything's smudged and it should be pretty much impossible to read. Just note that if you're gonna do that, don't make the mistake of only blurring out the number. If you want to completely hide it, because you can see the text to the right here, is a text-based representation of the same number. So we would want to blur that out too if we were trying to hide that. And if you want to make totally sure that whatever's behind it is unreadable, then you can also go to the end after you've blurred it out once, left click, and go in reverse, shift and control, and blur it back the other direction. And that would make it pretty hard to actually detect what's behind there. And just as a bonus here, not exactly a blur effect, but getting something similar to the smudge. If you want to redact a document, which is to put a black box of text over a part of it so that you cannot see it at all, then what we can do is add a layer here, go over to the rectangular select tool in the top left, draw a box, let's say around this name that we want to hide, and then you can either right click at it and fill with foreground color, or you can use the paint bucket tool with the foreground color selected there as black and fill in that area. And then that should obviously be undetectable. If you want to make double sure, you can go to the first layer and delete that information as well. So I'll take the eraser tool and I'll erase that. And now not only is it erased, but there's also a black box in its place where it was before. Okay, so moving on from that. If you want to do a blur effect where it applies to the entire image rather than part of the image like we did before, then we can go up to the filters menu in GIMP. So if we go to filters, blur is the first category here, and you'll see about uh, eight tools here that you can apply to your image. A really basic blur effect is the Gaussian blur. So when we use the Gaussian blur, it's kind of as if we had used the blur tool to every corner of the layer we're currently working on, which is often the entire GIMP document, and applying the blur evenly to all spaces. So I can increase the blur here by increasing the size X and Y, and when you have it as blurry as you want it, you can just kind of go ahead and hit OK, which will apply that to the layer in the background. 
So that would be one of the best ways to blur out an entire image all at once. It can also be useful if you split part of your document into two separate layers, then you can blur an entire layer, but not necessarily everything in your document all at once. Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. One more cool way you can blur is to use motion blur. So also in the filter menu, you have the circular motion blur, the zoom motion blur, and the linear motion blur. These motion blur effects almost gives it the appearance of being a shot from a video, uh, because obviously it fakes having motion. So with the zoom motion blur, it almost looks like a camera is quickly zooming in on the center focal point, the man and the cross over there in the center. And then everything else around it gets kind of distorted as that fast zoom happens. So this is kind of a similar effect to what you would have in something like Star Wars, where the spaceships would try to go to light speed. So it's illustrating really fast movement that approaches a single point, in this case, the center of the image. The other motion blurs are kind of similar. So circular motion blur will kind of give the appearance of if the image was rotating around in a circle. So you can see these spinning lines almost like a vinyl record. So the final tool I want to point out for you guys that you can use for GIMP blurring is called Gimmick, which is actually a library of effects. So if we go to my filters menu, you'll see at the bottom Gimmick QT. So this is actually a plugin you need to install. It's free, of course, and I'll have a link in the description. And when the plugin's installed, you just go to the filters menu, find Gimmick QT, and you'll get this pop-up window, which has currently 536 filters that you can apply to your image. So it takes the basic filters that GIMP has out of the box and adds a lot more effects that you can play around with on top of it. Now, I knew that the blur effects are under degradations here, but another way you can find effects is simply to put in a search term. So if I search blur here, you can see how it kind of finds all the effects that are related to a blur. So one of the new effects here that you have access to is glow. So rather than just a Gaussian blur where it kind of distorts everything and simply makes it harder to see, it's not as clear. The glow also blurs it, but at the same time makes it look a lot more like you're looking straight at a light such as the sun. So you kind of get that disorienting effect coming back at you. So if you wanted to brighten up everything by making it glow with light, but at the same time making it blurrier, or at least on your layer, maybe not the whole document, then this is a cool effect you can apply. And when you have it selected, you can just kind of go ahead and hit apply or okay. Uh, obviously over on the right, you can see a bunch of settings that you can change in order to modify exactly how the effect will look. But we go hit okay, we go back to our original document, and then we can see how the glow kind of turns out. So the whites, have become very strongly glowing here. And if I hit Control Z to undo it, you can see the difference. So in the original shot, the clouds are kind of dull, but as soon as we have the glow effect, it kind of opens up your eyes a little bit as you look at it and everything is just a bit more uh, bright. So that's my list for the five best tools that you can use in GIMP in order to do blur effects. Obviously, as you saw, there are more blur effect filters. So go ahead and try as many out as you want to. But in any case, I hope this video has helped you guys out a little bit to understand blurring in GIMP. One final tip, if you want to blur an entire layer, make sure you're using a filter effect because it will apply it evenly across your entire image automatically. But if you want to blur just a little bit of your document, like one character or one item, then you probably want to stick to the blur or the smudge tools. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you guys in my future video content.